And it all started early morning, Logan, Utah. Sun's out, breakfast shot. is on. Big time tailgating, an enormous game to start our college football doubleheader in Logan, Utah. This is the Home Depot College Football on CBS. A surprise that Boise State is one and two, and Utah State roars in at three and oh. Hi everybody, I'm Rich Waltz, along with Aaron Taylor, Sherry Burris will join us. What a beautiful day we have here in the Cache Valley, and a surprise, it's Utah State who comes in at 3-0. Who saw that coming? I know I didn't. I didn't expect Boise State to be 1-2 and two either. And that's what's interesting about today's game. This is a fair fight between two explosive offenses. I'd be shocked if this game doesn't go deep into the fourth quarter. And boy, do we have some fun at wide receiver in this game. Let's start with Utah State and Devin Tompkins. Oh, boy. Tompkins is one of the FBS most explosive wide receivers. And don't let his 5'8 size fool you. He plays big and big Moments. They like to move him around, but how this young secondary of Boise D's this guy and the rest of that talented wide receiver core up will be a big storyline in this game. And they've got a talented quarterback as well in Logan Barner. Question is, is he healthy? The answer, our Sherry Burris. Hi, Sherry. Hey, Rich. Logan Bonner looked good in pregame warm-ups. He's going to be the starting quarterback for Utah State. Head coach Blake Anderson said he's 97% healthy after taking a hit against Air Force and suffering a lower back injury. He tried to come back in, but was sidelined the rest of the game. Andrew Teasley took over, leading the Aggies to the win. Coach Anderson told me he can also expect to see Peasley. But as the head coach said, Rich, quote, Logan Bonner is our guy. And here they come. Logan Bonner leads him out. You want a guy? Boise State's got a guy. Khalil Shakir is talented and does everything. In fact, he's part of our Home Depot Do Project Smarter. Yeah, and the Broncos would be smart to get him the ball. Let's make no mistake about it. Boise needs to run the football today, and Khalil Shakir, believe it or not, can help him do it. He's excellent in space. He's fifth in the country at almost 17 yards per catch because once he gets in the ball in his hands, he's electric and can run well in the open field. But he's not one of those foo-foo wide receivers. He's not afraid to get dirty. He'll go up in traffic, catch those 50-50 balls. He's got great body control. He's got great vision. The Aggies are going to have to keep an eye on him because we're going to see him all over the field today. Here come the Broncos. We start our college football Saturday in the Mountain West, Boise State, Utah State. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Smile Direct Club. Wheels up. The Home Depot and by Progressive. Absolutely perfect. Cache Valley, 56 degrees. Bear River Mountain Range in the background. Blake Anderson from Arkansas State's his first year and a 3-0 start, including a road win in the Pac-12 in Pullman, Washington against Washington State in a thrilling come from behind win last week at Air Force. Boise State won the toss. They defer. They want to defend to open this game. And the football through the end zone, out to the 25. Aaron Taylor, what do we have with Logan Bonner? And he's coming over from Arkansas State following his head coach. And that's the thing that he brings with him that's most helpful today. He's experienced in this offense. He knows it like the back of his hand. I was really impressed, Rich, with the way that he made decisions and how quickly he made those decisions. The Boise State defense, though, will try to move on him pre and post snap, and they will test his decision-making ability. And as you had heard Sherry talk about, his backup, Henry Peasley, threw three touchdown passes at Air Force in the second half. So his backup is really good. Bonner is excellent. And here we go. Bonner to throw over the middle. Caught there. Justin McGriff cross midfield. And McGriff is into Boise State territory at the 45-yard line. Just finding a hole in the zone. A little soft there for Boise State. 
an almost interception there by Ezekiel Noah, but the pass was on point. Calvin Tyler Jr. on the ground. <laughs> Boise State stops him right at the line of scrimmage. Papa John's brings you our starting lineups, and Tyler's a key part of this offense. Yeah, this offense must be balanced to be effective, and Tyler gives them the best chance to do that, especially in the fourth quarter where he's averaging eight yards per carry. And a whistle. Timeout for an injured player. Riley Wimpy, a key member of Boise State's defense, is on his way to the sideline. He's not limping, he's running just fine, but they are looking into his helmet at this point. And so Logan Bonner back on the field. It's second down and 10. Something to keep an eye on sometimes, and I'm not accusing Boise to do this at all, but when you're playing a high-octane offense, being able to make substitutions in and out becomes extremely important. Utah State plays with tempo, and they practice with tempo. Bonner, blitz comes, has time, fires, middle. Out of the hands of McGriff. Intercepted for Boise State. Tyreek Jones with the pick and the Broncos have the football in great field position. Just a great job of being heads up turnovers were key. You're going to see right here. He's going to hit. It's wide open. That's the loose defense that you could possibly have. This is exactly what they want. The exact pass they used before. There's nobody within 10 yards, but unfortunately McGriff can't hold it. And Boise has the ball at midfield. Jones, his second interception of the season, the sixth of the secondary. And now our attention turns to the Boise State offense. Hank Bachmeyer and the Broncos. That's Shakir in motion. They will line him up everywhere. From their 42, Bachmeyer, short throw, caught in the flats. That's Shakir. And he's got the first down, a gain of about 14 yards to the 43 yard line of Utah State. Boise will like to use some tempo as well. Bachmeyer's off to the best statistical start of his entire career. The young man has Moxie, but his decision making is important here today as well. Little direct snap. And Vaughn's makes the stop. Shakir, I told you he was going to line up everywhere. They really need to run the football, it, it, whether it's George Holani or anybody. No, no question. And George Holani has allowed Boise to be 5-0 and oh when he scores a touchdown. Two of those five were against Utah State. They'd like to make it three. Our Papa John's lineups, Boise State on the move. Turnover already here. Long count for Bachmeyer. He'll pull it. 35. Gets the edge and has the first down to the 28. Hunter Reynolds made the stop. Already a couple wrinkles we're seeing for this defense, and that's why Justin Rice has to be at his best. Boise State's trying to manufacture a run game today. They can't run it traditionally because they just haven't been on the same page with all the injuries. But we've already seen Shakir in a run just there from Bachmeyer. That's going to force this defense to be much more disciplined with their eyes than they thought coming in. Tim Plow, the offensive coordinator, said it needs to be a group effort, not just George Holani. From the 28. A snap. No one was ready. Bachmeyer has it. Caught by Evans. And he's upended at the 22. That was almost a disaster there, but a really heads up play by Hank Bachmeyer. Passing is so about timing. The timing on this is off, but Bachmeyer hits his drop and finds the wide open receiver to give them a second and medium. That was disaster to a great job on first down. Boise State will play with tempo, but they'll do it selectively. And it's Holani now who lines up and takes a direct snap. He'll pull it. Holani tripped up right at the stick, has the first down at the 17. Who doesn't have a carry so far? And I love the way already that Boise State is spreading the ball around, and that's particularly helpful down here in the red zone. Andy Avalos, he bleeds blue, first year as a head coach, defensive coordinator at Oregon, longtime assistant, and a star linebacker at Boise State back in the day. Shakir in motion, Alani in the backfield. Bachmeyer pumps, waits, hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. 
arm was going forward. Patrick Joyner Jr. got a hand on the ball or on Bachmeyer. That's going to be Henniger off this backside. The left tackle of Juku, one of their leaders, just gives a little bit of a soft corner. Bachmeyer has to be able to feel that and step up if he can, but the tackle also has to be more firm out there on the edge. Second down, 10. Bachmeyer again, little center screen. That's Cutter, and he's blasted at the 15. Gain of two, Davis Cutter, the son of Dirk Cutter, former head coach at Boise State. They are really spreading this ball around. Three different Broncos have taken a snap in this game. That play had a chance, but the timing was off by just a hair. Third down eight, Halani in the backfield. Just four sacks in three games for Utah State. They've had trouble getting pressure on the passer. Bachmeyer's not as good throwing the ball on third down as you'd like. To the sideline. That's Holani. Oh, is he hammered? Decision making time here. There was some pressure from the backside. Sorry to jump on you there, Rich, but my goodness, Bachmeyer got this ball out quickly, and he's lucky because Utah State, the right tackle, gets beat and hits him right away. But great job of running to the football by this Aggie defense to force this field goal. That's one of the things that this defense has been very porous, has been excellent at, is what we're seeing here. The drive started with an interception, and now Jonah Dalmas, who remember had a field goal tipped at the end of the Oklahoma State game. Up and good. Boise State forces a turnover. A nice drive. And the first three points of this ball game. Three nothing start. Boise State on top of Utah State. From executive producer Dick Wolf comes a new night of television: FBI, FBI International, and FBI Most Wanted. These elite teams will prove that justice has no borders. Three teams, one night. New episodes Tuesday at 8, 7 central on CBS. Well, a quick start for Boise State. Defense leads to offense. Turnovers are huge, and Boise averaged 6.7 yards per carry on that drive. If they can keep it up, that would be huge here on the road. They don't want Savon Scarver to return any kickoffs, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Boise keep your State yeah, keep your eye today on J.L. Skinner. He's a heat-seeking missile and plays a big role and sets the tone for a young back end that must tackle well versus the run and keep this explosive Aggie receiving core contained. Not a very good job early on. They may want to think about jamming these receivers, playing a little bit more man coverage because it was way too soft in that zone the first drive. Bonner had men open. The interception was off the hands of his receiver. Blitz comes, quick throw, and Devin Tompkins with the touch, his first touch, and he's out to the 30. That's a gain of five. That's a good first throw after an interception to get a quarterback settled down, and now you're ahead of the stick. Second and five is where you want to be. Tyler has a seam and a nice gain across the 40. Out to the 42, Jackson Cravens made the stop 12 yards on the carry. Nice job of sifting in a full block by the center, Pule Alo there. They like to be able to get guys up and around on the backers. That was perfectly executed. Tompkins in motion. And a flag, and it looks like procedure. Ball start, offense, number eight, five-yard penalty. First down. A lot of moving parts, apparently one too many. And there's Ezekiel Noah. He came off and his arm was straight. Now he's being tended to by the trainers a little bit. You see him lifting that left shoulder. That's something for us and Sherry to keep an eye on. Noah and Riley Wimpy, two very talented linebackers. The strength of this Boise State defense, linebackers and safeties. Especially J.L. Skinner. Again, Tyler. Kaniho there to greet him. Not to gate of maybe one. 
We talked about this offensive line wanting to get on bodies. There's a little bit of movement there, but an excellent job by the left tackle initially following the stunt, which is the crisscross and exchange of assignments by the D-line. Bonner again. Deep shot. Had a man. That was Tompkins. This is too easy right here, Rich. They've had these deep shot opportunities. They've got to do a better job of having somebody stay in phase with these receivers. Good job on the bottom of the screen, but J.L. Skinner, the guy that we just featured, was struggled and allowed the explosive Tompkins to get behind him. There's a Bronco down. That's Tyreek Jones. And we'll step aside. Jones had the interception that set up the field goal early on at Utah State. Tyreek Jones into the injury tent. Utah State, third down and nine. Their own 43. Logan Bonner, a long look over. It's Calvin Tyler Jr. in the backfield with him. Bonner has time, and another man wide open. Tompkins. That middle, as you said, is really soft right now. They're being too soft. They're allowing them free access on the inside. That's just a breakdown. They fanned and flared the back out, which took the DB away. This is too easy a pitch and catch. This is Tyler picking his way through bodies as a gain of about two. Ezekiel Noah is back in there and he makes the stop. And it's really interesting, Rich. We talked with offensive coordinator Anthony Tucker and he talked about this offense being a blend of everything he did at UCF in Maryland, but spacing and formation is key. Tyler, 35 yard line, defending the run for Boise State, a point of emphasis this week as well. There's no question. And keep an eye, as we talked with Tucker, he talked about how important it is that he wants balance in this offense. So the spacing makes it really hard to defend the run inside. Clearly, Boise's making that a point of emphasis. But the free access and free release on the quick slants has to be solved here. This is right about the limit for field goal range for Utah State. Bonner, time, man open, deflected, broken up. Shea Oladipo coming over, the freshman. And that's a big deal, especially with Tyreek Jones out. There's been a lot of injuries on this back end. Number 26, Caleb Biggers playing for the injured Markel Reed. And this is something we've seen all season long for Utah State. They are aggressive. Eight for 11 on fourth down to start the season. All eight of those drives, they scored points. Blitz comes, Bonner's got time, steps up, fires, sideline, incomplete. He had two receivers down there, no flag, and the Broncos' defense gets the ball back. There was some very late pressure in his face that caused that errant throw, and another great stop by this Boise State Bronco team. Blake Anderson not happy with the start here at home. Welcome back to Logan with the Broncos up 3-0. Keep your eye right here. There's going to be a stunt, and you're going to see Banya come around and get some late pressure into the face of Logan Bonner. Blake Anderson wasn't happy, felt that that was a little bit late, but that's a little too close for comfort based on what happened last week where Air Force did the same thing and Bonner had to leave the game. Bachmeyer and the Broncos now. They're on 35. Hank has... Lots of time. This is C.T. Thomas. There's a whole squadron of wide receivers that can do damage for Boise State. And keep this in mind. Just about every one of those receivers can throw the football as well. I mean, it is Boise State. <laughs> they are a fun offense to watch. This is also the part of the field where you can take some deep shots or run those specials you just mentioned. Thomas again has the first down. Metzenheimer makes the stop, but not before he's into Utah State territory with 10 more yards. Really happy with the play calling now. 
by Tim Plow, keeping this Aggie defense off balance, doing an excellent job of mixing the ball around and manufacturing a run game. Shakir on the direct snap. We've seen Shakir take a snap. We've seen Holani take a snap. Tim Plow, his first year as the offensive coordinator, and he's on the sideline. Four years, the offensive coordinator at UC Davis, a UC Davis quarterback, and of course the lineage in Bronco history, both Chris Peterson and Dan Hawkins from UC Davis as well. Said that was a big moment for him because the players asked for him to be down there. Second down six. Holani is blistered. Henninger, that's a loss of almost three. That's an example. Player down for Utah State. Utah player Utah State player down and we'll step aside. That is Hale Mutu Apawaka headed off the field. And of course Boise State Tyreek Jones banged up and he is headed to the locker room. It's a big story for Boise's back in that's already banged up. It's a long third down here. Bachmeyer blitz comes, fires it in traffic and incomplete. No flags. Steph Cobbs was the intended receiver. I'm a little surprised that they did not throw a flag there. I thought that contact was early. There is some pressure here. Nice job by Utah State being able to close the pocket in on Bachmeyer. He gets the ball off, but you see him's holding there with his left arm and he's right in front of the official. I'm really surprised that they didn't throw it here. And Rich, here's an interesting decision midfield. You want to back Utah State up. Hidden yardage and field position is going to be a critical element in this ballgame. Fair catch called for and made at the 11. Invesco brings you today's scholar athletes. Boise State, Hikala Kanijo graduated summa cum laude back in May. Now he's taking courses in the College of Innovation. And for Utah State, he just made a big play. Nick Henninger. Earned his MBA in the spring, working on a second bachelor degree in aviation management. Invesco is proud to support student athletes on and off the field. A donation of $1,000 to Boise State and Utah State's general scholarship funds. Summa cum laude. That's pretty impressive. I, I graduated good laude. 33-yard <laughs> putt. Now it's, it's third possession here for Utah State. They've moved the football. But a deflected pass on an interception and a fourth down that didn't work out. And an illegal procedure is going to back him up inside the 10. False start. Offense, number 78, five yard penalty, first down. This is a huge opportunity and a costly penalty there. You take a look at their first two possessions, turnovers on back to back drives. Now they start this one in backed up field position on their third one. And now they're behind the sticks already. Bonner trying to find a seam, and that's broken up. Tompkins, the intended receiver. And again, Shea Oladipo making a play on the ball. Oladipo was able to make a play on this ball because it was late. Bonner has to be able to get that football out, but he had Rodney Robinson in his face, so he kind of checked the ball down. But that's the sort of tight back in coverage where the front end pressure is tied to the coverage that the Broncos need. Second down, 15. El Elian Noah is in the backfield. Tompkins with a catch. That's a heck of a throw to the far side of the field. And Tompkins just short of the sticks. But this is the aggressive offense that we've come to like. That deep out from the far hash is the gold standard for arm strength, and that was beautiful. Stacked receivers at the bottom. Wow. Noah is the short yardage back, and you just saw why. What a great way to move the pile. That's DJ Schramm that's unblocked, hits him in the hole. But Noah, because of the le leverage and leg power, picks up the first. DJ Schramm is six foot 231. 
Noah is 5'8", but 204. Hey, short does not mean small. Noah just proved that. Now you're talking. <laughs> From the 26. This time, he's double teamed. All right, let's go down below. Sherry Burris. Sherry? Rich, the fans down here are so loud on the Boise State sideline. It's making it hard for the players to communicate on defense. But I did see Andy Avalos. He got really close into his guys. He was preaching to his secondary and defensive linemen, communicate. Yeah, the chant of one and two greeted Boise State <laughs> when they ran on the field. I mean, the Broncos are angry enough at their start. They don't need to be reminded of it. Noah breaks loose. And a little bowling ball. Crashes across the 35. He's a yard short. And this will be a third down and less than one. Really nice job by Tucker, the offensive coordinator, to take advantage of a run game that's humming. Noah again. This time he's through. The 40 hauled down at the 30. Just a good job of splitting the heart of this defense. The Broncos have struggled to stop the run all season long. Utah State can keep that up. This is going to be a fun afternoon. 25 yards on the carry. Bonner is flushed. Fires incomplete. Don't know that that ball was catchable. There was contact. Brandon Bowling was out there for Utah State. And that was Caleb Biggers, and there was some incidental contact there. Little surprise, Bonner didn't take off and run. We've seen him be mobile and efficient with his legs. That's got to be something that Boise's got to keep an eye on. But this offense has been humming. The call after a first and 10 incompletion is a run here on second down. John Gentry and Isaiah Banya makes the stop. Really good opportunity for Boise State here to get themselves off the field or force the field goal. Remember, this is four down territory for this offense that loves to be able to play aggressively. So play caller Tucker knows already whether or not Blake Anderson has given him permission to go for two here. So if they get a gain of four or five yards, it could be a fourth down opportunity. This is third and 11. Bonner scrambling, fires it out. Gentry with a catch, racing for the sticks and has it. I think the official hasn't spotted it. Yes, first down. Oladipo again on the hit. That ball wasn't perfectly thrown, but just a beautiful job of coming back to it, knowing where the sticks are and picking up the first down. At the 20. Gentry left side. Flag is down. Gentry inside the 15 and down to the 11. Rodney Robinson. Boise State, number four, lost his helmet during the play. Must sit out one down. I was just about to say that. Rodney Robinson with the hit and the stop, but he'll have to go out for a snap. But the flag was back in the backfield. Offense, number 58, 10-yard penalty, first down. That's Dimitrik Aliaflua, the guard on the inside. Keep your eyes right there. He's got his hands outside. He's got to reposition it. I don't know how much of a hold that was. That was a little questionable there. But man, Robinson has to keep his head up. He loses his helmet, but he's lucky he didn't lose much more there. Got to keep the head out of the game and play smart. Bonner in trouble and down he goes. And the Broncos have their seventh sack of the season. Just an excellent job of bringing some outside pressure from the second level. He beats the back. You do not want to have Calvin Tyler pulled up in pass protection because he can't do it. And both ends get home and back to back lost yardage plays. First from the hold, now from the pressure. At the Boise State 34, Broncos show blitz. Three man rush. Bonner, a strike on the middle. Caught. Well short of the first down, bowling. This is going to bring up about a third down and about 10. This is his best route, and he's got a history with Logan Bonner. Back-to-back 100-yard -back games for bowling. And a little aggressive here on fourth down, but Utah State at home wants to get, excuse me, third down. Bonner, end zone, oh. incomplete. Scarver, the intended receiver. Do they settle for three? They went for 
a fourth down and eight earlier and did not get it. We saw Justin McGriff lose the ball because of the sun. This is off the inside eye, so I don't think that that affected McGriff there. But those are the plays where football's a game of inches. That was so close, a well-thrown ball and route that just didn't connect. Connor Coles, 36 yards. It's five of five so far this year. Oh. Got a hand on it, but the whistle was blown before Play the kick. Game. Offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Both coaches, when we talked to them, Blake Anderson, Andy Avalos, said you can talk about offense, defense all you want. It, it'll come down to details and special teams. Always does. But what's interesting to me about this is that this team is not executing a delay a game. That whole series for them that had some big plays in it just at the end fell apart. You want to beat a good team like Boise that's itching to get a win. That's not the way you want to execute. This time from 41. It looked like Scott Matlock. <laughs> and the Broncos hold on to the lead. Matlock, the junior out of Homedale, Idaho. Off the right side of the screen, just gets up. That kick was low. He made it way too easy for Matlock to be able to block it. He goes up and over, but he's not jumping over a defender. But man. What a cacophony of errors there at the end for Utah State and just the sort of start that the Broncos wanted. Five block kicks last year, three of them in one game against Colorado State, and all three of those were returned for touchdowns. Only about 40 special teams plays in total in a football game, and Boise's winning this early matchup. Both offenses have moved the football. Bachmeyer over the middle. Caught there. Shakir racing to the 10. Down to the 7. 69 yards. An incredible job of taking advantage of Utah State rocking their safeties. Boise hadn't taken many downfield shots, and Bachmeyer actually had two options on that last play. Cyrus Habibi Liko took that direct snap. False start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. First down. It's on Jake Stetz, their big mauler on the opposite side. But we talked about Shakir in the open. The yards after the catch, and look how much hustle his teammates have. Not very many people can catch him from behind. So give some credit to Monte McGarry for being able to preserve the touchdown. Now they got to force another field goal here like they did on the first drive. Habibi Lico is the third different Bronco to take a direct snap other than Hank Bachmeyer. Halani lost the ball. It's loose and Utah State has it. Is it a lateral or a bad handoff? It looked to be a lateral. The ball left Bachmeyer's hands from underneath. This may be a huge break for Boise State. It looked initially to my eye like it was a bad exchange, but you do see him go underhand. Moving on the field is an incomplete forward pass. It'll be second down. Wow. And that's not a designed play, Rich. You wouldn't do that here in this situation, but clearly Bachmeyer does. What an interesting wrinkle that saves Boise State from a turnover here in the red zone. Gene Steratore is with us. That's a fine line, isn't it, Gene? It is, Rich, but it's designed that way for this reason, that if that arm is moving forward and the ball goes forward, if in the event we have this exchange mishap like this, you do have the protection that that's an incomplete pass as opposed to a fumble because the arm is moving forward and so is the football. 
That's a great explanation there, Gene. But what baffles me is why you would do this down here. I know they're trying to fake with the motion with Shakir coming across. But to me, this is way too risky of an exchange. And we're seeing it right here that merits doing something a little bit more safer. I know that they were trying to do the five sweep and catch the linebacker's eyes. But man, did they get lucky there. And so Boise State is going to hang on to the football. It goes as an incompletion. You usually see that if you're going to do a flip pass with the fly sweep to Shakir, that would be the mechanism to do it. But it should just be an inside zone read with a handoff there to 24 if Halani's going to go first. And Gene, now we know you can throw a forward pass with two hands. Yes, yes, After that's exactly review, right. The ruling on the field of an incomplete forward pass is confirmed. Second down. Not a popular call in the Cache Valley. And I think uh, Blake Anderson speaks for everyone here. But for Boise State, they're moving the football. Bachmeyer has hit a variety of receivers. The running game has had great variety and great success. Has had great variety and. Bachmeyer in trouble, caught. Wings it into the end zone. There's a wrestling match. Evans was interfered with. Bachmeyer was still alive. And they were lucky. There was some late pressure there. Right there, you see that right arm come across his shoulder and turn his body right there. It's Cam Lampkin's Lampkin. Busted. Pass interference, defense, number six. The foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be spotted on the two-yard line. Except for that first down. When the ball's, it's a 15-yard penalty from the spot, but because it happened in the end zone, it moves it up to the two-yard line, and we're watching this Utah State team fall apart right before our eyes. Maybe a little bit of luck for the old alum in blue. Andy Avalos and the Broncos now first and goal from the two. Bachmeyer was caught, but he wasn't down. Beautifully designed blitz coming off both outside edges. The tackle had to make a decision, took the most dangerous. The back went to the right, picked his guy up. But Utah State couldn't get home fast enough. Blake Anderson just went down and said something to the official, whether it's a timeout. Full timeout. And it is. For the Aggies trying to regroup. Boise State on the doorstep with a 3 0 lead. Van Buren, the short yardage back for Boise State, takes it in. And the Broncos, four plays, 76 yards. The strike and the run to Khalil Shakir set it all in motion. And a Utah State team that has moved the football but has nothing to show for it will get it back. Scarver to a knee. The weekend might be ending, but the crime solving is only beginning. NCS and NCS Hawaii are here to solve your Mondays. The cases, the crews you love are now on Mondays. Watch new episodes. NCIS, NCIS Hawaii, Monday, starting at 9, 8 Central on CBS. Maverick Stadium on the campus of Utah State. This is a, a fun stadium. It is a deep bowl. The fans are right on top. Bonner quick throw. Bonner's pass is complete to Justin McGriff. And it's Justin McGriff who makes the catch. And He's out of bounds. We take a look at Utah State. This is very familiar territory for them. They've trailed by 10 or more points in each game this year and won every single one of those. They may have the Broncos right where they want them. And two of those were road games in tough environments. I'm not sure they want to expose Bonner to too many hits after last week. Remember, he got a hit in the Air Force game and did not play in the second half. And Utah State here doesn't have to run another play. They can let this quarter run out but they are under center and ready to rock they're up tempo Bonner's throw over the 
middle and it's caught a sliding Tompkins right at midfield. And you see Tompkins right there at the end pointed at JL Skinner again easy free access inside they have to do something to disrupt that timing jamming 13 or getting after the quarterback using press bracketing something to eliminate the easy pass inside. Heck they get another snap off before the clock trying to bounce outside Tyler Jr. Shoulder down inside the 40. That's a first down. Another 10 yards. That, and that's going to end the quarter there, Rich. Utah State feeling themselves and getting after it. 10 nothing, Boise State. You're watching the Home Depot College Football on CBS. Back to Logan after this message and a word from your local station. Perfect. Utah State with the football to start the second quarter. Tyler gets the edge and the first down and out of bounds at the 18, 22 more yards. Okay, you see that Riley Wimpy runs underneath there. This is a great job of running an inside zone, but instead the tight end slips outside and circles the defense for the big gain. Nice wrinkle there. Bonner pulls it, fires it, incomplete. Another nice play, that's Tyreek LaBeouf, the junior corner. And this is a secondary that's got some young corners, Markel Reed is dressed but not available battling some injuries but just a well timed play on the ball there with his right hand to prevent Griff McGriff from catching it. Utah State has over 210 yards of total offense. They're averaging almost eight yards a play and they don't have a point. And off to Calvin Kyder Jr. No gain there. Riley Wimpy on top of him. And Riley Wimpy is on, on top of a lot of people. He's a terrific linebacker. He was, and he was playing behind 92, Michael Callahan, that got some penetration there. That was a gap scheme where he tried to pull the backside guard and run along the wall on the front side, but there was no wall because 92 blew it up. Third down, 10. Just inside the 18. Might be four down territory here, so keep an eye on the play call. If they get fourth and five or more, they may consider going for it. Bonner flushed, spins, looks, deeks, fires, end zone, and it's intercepted. Boise State has their second pick. LaBeouf again. And to make matters worse, there's a player down for Utah State. Just a panic throw that time by Logan Bonner. Well defended. And again, that's LaBeouf who's winning his matchup with McGriff. He's in phase the whole time. You see him there. He gives him a little bit of space. And the ball is just overthrown. A bad decision, a bad throw by Bonner. And Boise State has their second INT. Let's see if he came back That's out of the end zone. That's what I'm looking at, exactly. I'm sure the officials, too. It looks like he's out of the end zone, and they're going to mark this football inside the one. His Two turnovers and a missed field goal. All that yardage for Utah State, and they have nothing. Not finishing drives, but they had an opportunity. That was just a bad decision by Logan Bonner, and they're feeling it. He's pressing a little bit. It's only 10 nothing. This offense is designed to be able to strike quickly and come back. That ball should have never been thrown. They should have taken another field goal attempt to make this a 10 three ball game. Doesn't matter where he caught it. He left the end zone. The ball broke the plane. And the official was all on top of it. This is going to be a very backed up situation for Boise State. Gene Steratore, what'd you see? Aaron is all on top of it as well, Rich. The entire football has to be out of the end zone after possession. We can see after this, this interception that he does lean forward. The entire football is in the field of play. Then his forward progress gets knocked backward. It's a good spot by the officials at the one. All right, thank you, Gene. Bachmeyer's in the end zone, and he throws it away. 
That was a good decision. He did have Octavius Evans open, but there was pressure in his face, so he wasn't able to throw it right there. Good job on that outside end by Joyner forcing that throw to be early. I don't mind that play call there, especially with the way Boise has run the football. But at some point, you got to push the pile here to give yourself some room to breathe. Second down. High snap. Bachmeyer fires it. Oh, that's a nice catch. That's Davis Cutter. My goodness, that went from near disaster to a positive play of six yards. And the second time in this ball game, we've seen an errant snap that Bachmeyer has fielded and delivered a dime as a result. That's just heads up quarterback play. That's instinctual and maybe one of the areas we've seen Bachmeyer grow. Let's see what he can do here on third down because this would be a big stop for the Aggies if they could force the punt. From the seven, got to get to the 11. Bachmeyer fires, silent man wide open. Caught there. Likio up the sideline, cross midfield, inside the 40. Huge play for the Broncos. This is just going to be. These receivers are going to run inside routes. There's going to be some garbage there in the front. This is as good of a pick play as you can have with the flare wheel route to Habibi Likio out of the backfield for the big game to cross midfield. 55 yards, 38 yard line of Utah State. Direct snap Shakir to the 37 yard line. Tim Plow, the offensive coordinator, wasn't lying when he said. We got to be more creative offensively. We got to take the load off of George Halani. And they've done that. They've done a masterful job of that. And you have to think, Rich, that him being down there on the field, looking his players in the eyes, asking them what they like, what do you guys want here? What do you feel comfortable in? All of that has made a huge difference today for this offense. Mikio in the backfield. Shakir back in motion. Will fly sweep near side. Finds a seam. When he's carrying the ball, he's more running back than receiver. Byron Vaughn's made the stop for Utah State. Watch this little jump cut after he gets the football. He's such a good open field reader. It's kind of blocked up decently, but right there, that skip inside takes a nice shot. And this whole drive started because the bad decision by Bonner should have never thrown that football into the end zone. Third down three. And certainly four down territory and right on the field goal range for Boise State. Likio going to lose a couple. It'll be fourth down and about five. Justin Rice made the stop. If I'm Boise State, this is kind of right at the edge of where your kicker is, but with a 10-point lead, kicking a field goal to go up and make this a two-score game is absolutely the right decision here. You want to be aggressive, but when you're on the road, getting some points here is so critical. Your defense is bending but not breaking. I like this decision, but the execution of this has been a problem for the Broncos. Thomas is long this year is from 40. This is from 50. Got it out. No. Plenty of leg. Still 10 nothing. Boise State. Adam Zucker back in New York with his Jeep update. Texas and Texas Tech in Austin. Tyler Shuck. Chucks and Josh Thompson jumps in front of it. That's going to be a pick six. Longhorns on top 28 to 7. Rich and Aaron Brian Jones just beaming here in the studio. Uh, right. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Quarterback change for Utah State. John Gentry around the left side, and he's going to get about three yards. Logan Bonner has thrown two picks. Henry Peasley, who was terrific in the second half at Air Force. He threw for almost 200 yards and three touchdowns in that comeback win. And a flag is down. Ball start. Offense number 51. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's Quazelle White. 
and you're at home. But take a look at Peasley, his numbers. He really gave them a spark coming off the bench in that second half against Air Force. And his mobility, his ability to run, he's got open field speed. So expect to see six legs here sooner than later. Utah State has well over 200 yards in total offense. Well, two interceptions, a missed field goal, and a missed fourth down. And they're faced now with a long third down. And you notice right away the difference in the tempo. With Beasley there, they're slowing everything down. They've had two procedural penalties, false starts, and that's a big reason why they're maybe trying to catch their breath here offensively, especially with a new quarterback. Beasley in trouble, and he throws it away. He had a receiver there, and it's incomplete. And so change of quarterback, and Utah State is three and out. There was immediate pressure on there. They had a screen drawn up. This is exactly what you want, but the pressure showed up too quickly, and the ball carrier that he was trying to throw to, getting that ball to Gentry, got knocked down because of that pressure up front. That play was blown up before it even started. It's a huge stop and response by this Bronco defense after the missed field goal. Aussie punter, Stephen Cutson Lee. Khalil Shakir is deep. Shakir waves it off, now picks it up. He attempted the fair catch. And so that punt is going to pin Boise State inside their 20 back to the 15 yard line. But that was an excellent job by Khalil Shakir there to make the fair catch call and not let it roll. The Broncos hope to get some things going on offense. They look to be in charge so far here through a quarter in a little bit. That is not the Aflac duck, but this is the Aflac trivia question. <laughs> Let's test your knowledge here. Aflac trivia question. Boise State's head coach the last time they started one and three. Broncos start this, and Bachmeyer pulls and escapes across the 25 to the 28. That's a 12-yard gain. Hank Bachmeyer has been much more active in the run game. And that's a wrinkle that they just simply haven't shown on film this season. Coach has told us he's not the best runner, but we need him. And it's plays like that that keep the Aggies off balance. 28-yard line. Shakir. Little toss. Thomas cut off at the pass. Improvises. It gets to the 35-yard line. That was a lot of moving parts for seven yards. It was, and that play was designed to get to the perimeter, but it was a nice job of running by Thomas. But instead of trying to get outside, sees that it opens up and punctures the defense, gets north and south. If he had been able to break outside of the block there by Stets, he might still be running. Polani on second down and three. Patrick Joyner makes the stop. It's a nice physical run there by Helani. He's struggled a little bit staying healthy, and that's really thrown this run game off for Boise State. They've had some injuries up front. Garrett Curran is finally getting healthy. When you have all those moving pieces, the run game is all about timing and a familiarity, and the Broncos just haven't had a chance to do that. So what they're doing today to mix this run game up is a really effective strategy. That carry enough for the first down. Blitz comes. Bachmeyer has time into traffic and it's incomplete. Shakir, the intended receiver. Just talk about the ball distribution. Take a look at the rush yards by position. Wide receivers, quarterbacks, running backs. The running backs have been largely ineffective, which unfortunately has been the story for Boise State, but that has not been the case here in the first half. And both the wide receiver group and the running back group have taken direct snaps from center. Second and 10, inside screen. Shakir and Utah State had it smelled out nicely. Yeah, anytime you motion out to four strong, that's a high percentage of a bubble screen situation. When they took the back out of the backfield and lined them up there, the Aggies were waiting on it. Kalani in the backfield. 
Four man rush. Bachmeyer's throw is knocked down. Henninger again. Nice response there by this Aggie D. Henninger's at the line of scrimmage. Didn't get any penetration, but he timed his jump perfectly. That's the same thing as a pass breakup by a defensive back. And now Boise State's out here to punt to put this ball back into an offense that's been explosive but just hasn't been able to close the deal. Joel Velasquez. Jordan Nathan, fair catch called for in the game. Utah State down at home. 10 nothing. Broncos. Tomorrow, week three of the NFL on CBS. Lots of great matchups. Chargers, Chiefs, Bengals, Steelers, Dolphins head to Vegas. We were just there last week, Parker. Yes, we were. What a beautiful place that is. All starts at noon Eastern. JB and the crew get you set. The NFL on CBS. This guy's been in the NFL a long time. He made a lot of tackles last week. An incredible performance by Bobby Wagner, former Utah State Aggie. Right now, the Aggies trying to get their offense rolling. Andrew Peasley off the bench, in for Logan Bonner. Tyler carried for just two. This guy can run, Peasley, and Andrew Peasley is out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Rodney Robinson made the stop. Great play call there by Anthony Tucker, the offensive coordinator. It's a two-way go. He can pitch it with his arm with a forward pass or use his legs like he did there. That's where he's dangerous. We'll see more of that. Beasley's looking to run right out of the chute. Escapes. He has elite speed, according to the coaching staff. And Anthony Tucker, the offensive coordinator, intends on using that. He's got a 59-yard run this year. You saw him in the second half of the Air Force game. He can split it on a design run up the gut like that, but also in a third and long situation. If you're not in your rush lanes, he can hurt you. Good pick up on the blitz. Peasley's in trouble, throws it away. That's a close eye. Very close. From the referee, Steve Barron, but no flag. For intentional grounding to happen, you have to either be inside the tackle box or the ball doesn't go past the line of scrimmage. There was no receiver there, and that's what they're discussing. There we go. Intentional grounding, offense number six. The quarterback was outside the tackle box, but the ball did not reach the line of scrimmage. Loss of down, spot foul, third down. That's good communication with this officiating crew. Gene Steratore joins us now. Hey guys, Aaron, again, you're all over the rule. And, and to speak to the mechanics of it, and Rich, you began to allude to that as well, it does take two or three officials to communicate all of this. The officials protecting the quarterback, he realizes he's out of the pocket. The line of scrimmage official needs to bring the information on where the ball landed. So after a series of conversations between a couple officials, they've come to the right answer, and it's a great job of officiating. So you're saying, Gene, they just don't make stuff up? They're actually talking out there? <laughs> Every once in a while we made it up, Aaron, but in this case there was there was really a good reason for the talk. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. Third down 17. A deflected throw is incomplete. This Boise State secondary has been picked on at times, but they are playing really well right now. That's another play on the ball. But also from a play call standpoint, Rich, they're hurting themselves with penalties. They're making bad decisions. This Utah State offense that's allowed them to be 3-0, that's had all the second half, fourth quarter comebacks, just keeps shooting itself in the foot, and Boise's there to happily make them pay for it. Shakira's deep. Fair catch. He didn't drop anything. 10-0, Boise State. Geico halftime report right around the bend. Adam, Rick, BJ will have first half analysis. Highlights from around the country on the Geico halftime reports. We're in Logan, Utah in the Mountain West opening our college football Saturday. 
Of course, Arkansas, Texas A&M coming up from Dallas after this one. Got a bunch set up top, and C.T. Thomas one-on-one -on -one down low. Bringing pressure. Third down five. Pressure on Bachmeyer. Gets it away. It's caught. That's Cutter. Coach's kid. So dependable. And I know it wasn't his dad that opened a season at one and three. Our Aflac trivia question. No question about that. And Boise using tempo again after that first first down. Bachmeyer again. This time incomplete. Cutter again. It's a Hadri Jackson on the coverage. And that's an example where Bachmeyer and the receiver aren't on the same page. The sun with the angle as it, it is now, it's a little bit easier, but it's tough seeing down there sometimes, especially when the ball's coming out at that angle. That's a great point because in football, you don't talk about the sun much, but any receiver headed towards the end zone that Boise State is headed towards is going to have to look back into the bright sun. We looked into that sun as well. And we saw wide open Justin McGriff for Utah State on the first interception of the game. That ball hit him right in the hands. I'm not so sure that the sun didn't play an impact there. Well, you can tell. Just look at the shadows of the players and the direction of the sun. Third down. There's a flag on the field at the way back. Near left 30. That may be we're picking it up. Seems to be inadvertent, yeah. I didn't see anything in real time, but you see Bachmeyer is now walking over the coaching staff, taking advantage of this extra time to discuss this important third down. Illegal substitution defense, 12 players. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. Wow. That's a that's a big penalty. And Blake Anderson. Not a lot has gone right for Utah State. They have moved the football. But turnovers two interceptions. A missed opportunity on fourth down. A blocked field goal attempt. But miscues, miscommunication, lack of execution has been crucial and a big reason why they're down 10 points here in this first half at home. And their offensive line is jumping off sides and they're the home team. Yeah, right now there's confusion. The, the down marker has a third down. It should be second down. And that's the, the pain of that penalty for Utah State is they lose yardage and Boise State gets the, the down back. And second and five is wide open for a play caller. Every play in your call sheet is wide open. And when you become head coach at Boise State and you walk in the door, they hand you a thumb drive. On that thumb drive, all the trick plays from Chris Peterson and Dan Hawkins and Brian Harson. Just a great history of trickery, deception, and success. And it all started to bring fun wrinkles to the offense to get them on the highlight shows have everybody talk about them and man they've been successful with it over the years who can forget the Statue of Liberty against Oklahoma. Well the, the hook and lateral was pretty good. Yeah <laughs> that set it all up. <laughs> Coach Pete I think emptied the thumb drive that night. Man in Arizona. Well you do what it takes to win and Boise State certainly has a long history of doing that. We haven't seen any outright trickery, but man, have we seen a lot of different looks. Blake Anderson's defense has had to defend a variety of ball carriers from a variety of directions. And it hasn't been easy. They don't have an opportunity to be able to see these sorts of plays on film, but they're defending and canceling the gaps of the traditional run schemes extremely well, the stuff that they walked on. And what the officials are looking here is trying to see when that 12th player came on. Was it on second down? When did he come out is going to determine how this ends up. But what I appreciate, even though as fans and announcers, we don't like this time, it's really important that they get this right. And it is second down. The sticks says second. Officials say let's go. George Halani in the back with uh, Hank Bachmeyer, who's been very efficient. And with Shakir in motion. And again, Bachmeyer pulls it. Good hit by Shaq Bond coming up. This will bring up third down and a short three. 
Boise back up at the line of scrimmage trying to use tempo. You see Utah State still trying to get themselves lined up. They want to snap this ball and run it or get it out of the quarterback's hands as quick as possible. Bachmeyer sideline broken up. Wow. Justin Rice. A linebacker making that play. All conference at Fresno State two years ago. Here he is. You're going to see he's going to break on it right away. Never takes his eye off the quarterback. Just lays out and smacks the hand down. Rich, that was an excellent play, but they've got to follow it up with another one here. I love this play call by Boise. Be aggressive. Fourth down three. Utah State burns a timeout. 420 left. Entertaining first half. 10-0 Boise State. Andy Avalos in his first year, the two losses by razor thin margins on the road at UCF against Oklahoma State by a point they had big second half leads in both of those games. And right now he's going for it on fourth and third, and you like that. I do, because this team is one and two. They're on the road with a red hot Utah State team. Your defense is playing extremely well in the red zone, bending but not breaking. This is a critical opportunity for him, not only here at midfield, but with four minutes and 20 seconds left, if they can continue this drive, bleed some time off the clock, this helps their defense rest and takes them in with tremendous momentum into the second half. And it's Holani in what looks like the Wildcat with Ty Neal Hopper, a tight end behind him. And Bachmeyer shifts back in behind center. Quick throw, caught, Evans, nice move, got the first down, flag is down, another flag, Evans is out of bounds at the 21, but two flags back at the 40-yard line. It's going to be a hold on Riley Smith, it's unfortunate, but the officials were on top of it. The DB went underneath him and he had his arm hooked and laid on top of him. Holding, offense, number three, 10-yard penalty enforced from the spot of the foul, it'll be fourth down. And that changes your decision making if you're Boise. And now the rare penalty for the Broncos cost them. Did you see it right there? Excuse me, it was right here. That play was there, it was wide open. But a costly mistake gets this crowd back on its feet. Some energy and momentum for this team that needs some. That's one of the things Boise has succeeded in doing, along with a 10-0 lead. They've kept the crowd out of this game. Wow, beautiful punt. Nathan, uh-oh, makes the catch at the one. Not a good decision. Uh -oh. And he's hit and dropped, and he's in the end zone. Did he get out? Wow, they're going to give him forward progress there. I thought he was free and still looked like he was trying to run. He should have never fielded that football in the first place. But the Aggies get really, really Going lucky the field, there. forward progress to that one-half yard line. First down. You should never field a punt there. There's so much can go wrong, and it's this. He's free there now, and he's trying to run. He has not stopped. I don't think that he had forward progress there. The Aggies got lucky. Gene Steratore, it's a delicate dance on the end zone, not only for a returner, but also for an official. It is, but Aaron's right. Listen, when we have the attempted tackle right here, we see disengagement completely from both players, and now the returner takes himself back into the end zone on his own, and then he is tackled. That is not forward progress. That's a player taking himself into the end zone on his own volition and being tackled. That should be a safety. So a big break. Thank you, Gene for Utah State, and I'm not sure what went through Nathan's mind to make that catch at the one. Obviously in need of breathing room, and they'll get some here on a nice burst by Calvin Tyler Jr. And that should be enough for a first down. Ten yards on the carry. This Utah State offensive line is doing a nice job of covering up the defenders for Boise State. Everybody gets blocked, but if you're a defensive lineman, you can't stay blocked. But the Aggies are making sure that that's taking place. Of note, Logan Bonner is back in. Andrew Peasley had a couple of drives. And Utah State still looking for breathing room here. Scott Matlock clogged up the middle. Matlock has made 
some big plays in this game including a blocked field goal. This is a defensive line with a lot of history especially the creatures off the outside edge that can rush the passer. We've seen Isaiah Banya get some pressure. Shane Irwin is a sack master but you're right inside. It's all about Scott Matlock holding that point and trying to take the center and guard out of play. Second down eight keeping it on the ground. This does not look I know that they're backed up but this doesn't look like the Utah State offense we saw move the football so well in the first quarter. No they're intentionally trying to bleed the clock so Boise may want to think about taking the time out here. This is a huge third down stop. If they don't get it expect a timeout for Boise if they run if it's an incomplete pass it's a moot point. But the Aggies clearly trying to end this first half as soon as possible to get into halftime and get things sorted out. Broncos have two timeouts left. Third down five. Bonner's throw on the money there. That's Derek Wright with the catch. Wright spins away. Midfield. Out to the 40. For that. That's just the play that they need. But it's poor tackling by the Ag or by the Broncos. That's three, four players. Finally, the fourth player gets them down. Now expect to see some tempo. From the Boise State 40. Another hole for Tyler Jr. Another nice chunk. Oh my gosh. Eight yards. If you can crack off those eight yard runs, you got them right where you want them. They've got one timeout left with just under two minutes. Plenty of time. The clock is not a factor here. Boy, a touchdown would take away a lot of the bad taste of this first half it for Utah State. It certainly would, especially considering that Boise State starts the second half with the football. Second down. Tyler again. First down inside the 20. Clock stops. They move the chains. 14 more yards. And this is what the RPO offense is. It's a run first pass option. We're going to run the football as long as you let us. When you start to take that away, that's when we're going to throw it. Right now, Boise is letting them run the football, but the Utah State offensive line is having a lot to do with that. Logan Bonner has thrown two picks. They've missed a field goal. They missed on a fourth down. The Aggies have moved the ball all over this field and are down 10 nothing. Boise State with two timeouts is happy to let them continue to bleed this clock. Under a minute left. Bonner's going to keep it. Runs out of room and has to get down. And that is going to eat up a lot of clock. It's at the 18 yard line. Yeah it is. That's almost effectively a sack. I don't know if I necessarily like that play call. Time is still not a factor but is about to be here very shortly. Under 30 seconds. Bonner end zone shot and there's no one home. The band was open. <laughs> And a wholesale change by Boise State bringing in entirely new players. Five new players come in for this Bronco defense to try to get home at the quarterback. You can't have this red zone offense two times in and nothing. Man there's been kryptonite on that 20 yard line. Something's happened when they've crossed it and get down there. They just fall apart. They've got to find a way to make something happen. And here's 13 here on the inside right there. He's the guy I'm going to in this situation. That's Devin Tompkins. Bonner fires caught Derek Wright and then it's out of his hands. Well again long drive fourth down field goal unit on. This may not be much but I can't stress how important it is for Utah State to get some points on the board and end what's been a, a really disjointed first half on a positive note. Keep your eye on 99 for Boise State. He's already blocked one. Coles. And this one is no good. I don't know that I've ever seen a team move the ball with such explosiveness and get shut out in a half. Looks to be a clean execution. He just pulled it. You see it. He didn't have the club face sitting flush there. 
And that's a costly mistake. Remember, this is a team, Rich, that we talked about it in three or four days leading up to this game about how confident they were coming into this ball game. They surprised themselves with this 3-0 start to a person. Even Coach Anderson said, yeah, I need to reset my expectations of this team. That Washington State game gave them all the confidence and buy-in they've needed. But if they thought they were going to walk in here and walk over a 1-2 and two reeling Boise State team, they've got another thing coming. This game's going to be won, like I said, late in the fourth quarter, but Boise wins the first half. Remember, Boise State has blown two leads late in second halves this year, and all three wins for Utah State were comebacks in the second half. 10-0 Boise State. Coach Avalos will visit with Sherry. The halftime interview, you can find it Twitter at CBS Sports. Now we go to Adam Zucker, our New York studio, for the Geico Halftime Report. All right, Rich, interesting half. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, we'll get you caught up on today's early action and look ahead to game two of our doubleheader, Texas A&M in Arkansas, after this word from your local station. Logan, Utah, the beautiful Bear River Mountain Range and Boise State a 10-0 halftime lead. Now a, a taste of tradition presented by Sonic. Let's send it down to Sherry Burris. Thanks, Rich. Merlin Olsen is a Utah State legend. The Logan native is the most decorated football player in school history. He was named first team All-America in both his junior and senior seasons. Olsen played 15 seasons in the NFL before being selected to both the Pro Football and College Football Hall of Fames. In October 2010, Utah State named the field inside Maverick Stadium after Olsen. The ceremony included an unveiling of a larger-than-life bronze statue created by Utah artist Blair Buswell. All right, thank you, Sherry. A lot of history here at Utah State. Right now, though, the Aggies are down 10-0. In the Mountain West, moments before second half, Boise State a 10-0 lead over Utah State. Rich Waltz, Aaron Taylor, Sherry Burris. How does this happen? Utah State has 317 yards of total offense. They don't have a point. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this, man. And I got to tip my hat to Utah State. They got them right where they want them. <laughs> to play as bad as they played in the first half and only be down by 10 is also hard to do. With the Aggies being the second half team, what I, if I was Blake Anderson in that locker room, I'd say, okay, guys, let's flush that first half. Let's get back to being who we are and let's go win this ball game at home. Blake Anderson and Utah State three second half comebacks to go three and oh two of those on the road in tough environments at Washington State and at Air Force. Short kick and I believe a fair catch was called for. The Broncos will get the football with the lead, and we go down to Sherry Burris. Sherry? Rich Coach Anderson said he thought his defense played great, and on offense, you guys mentioned the stats. He said they've done everything they can, just doesn't have anything to show for it. But he said they have been in worse positions, talking about coming back in the second half. He said he told his team the same message he did in those previous three games, which was outwork and outrun them. All right, you saw both head coaches. Blake Anderson's team has been a comeback team. Andy Avalos' team, and although they were on the road at UCF and against Oklahoma State, had two second-half leads slip away from them. Fair catch. They reset the clock. And now Hank Bachmeyer in Boise State. At the 30. This is a throw situation. Bachmeyer looking incomplete. Riley Smith, the intended receiver. Well, you take a look at these first half game trends. Khalil Shakir led the team with total offense. He was just amazing. He was the do-everything guy. And Calvin Tyler, though, this run game for Utah State, they love to stay balanced. They've done an excellent job of that. But that Aggie offense shot itself in the foot way too many times. Whoa! Again, Bachmeyer will pull it. And again, it's a big game. He has been a huge part of the ground game today. 
If you're the defensive end, you have to have good eyes. You're going to see him come down and read it. They think it's going to be a give. They're not expecting Bachmeyer to run his feet, but somebody has to set the edge on the defense. That's just poor alignment and assignment by an Aggie defense that it does a pretty good job of stopping the run between the tackles, but has been porous on the edge. And just like that, Boise State is at midfield. This time a pitch. Evans around the end. Gets outside. Cut off there, though. Boy, that's good pursuit. Cash Gilliam. Just an excellent job of Cash Gilliam taking a good pursuit angle. This is off of a counter play. They fooled everybody, but Cash Gilliam goes the hard way over the top, sets the edge, lets the pursuit come down there for the very short game. That play had a chance. Second down nine. Holani gets to the 42. Short of the first down by two yards, seven yards on the carry. And that time, A.J. Vongpachan was unblocked and didn't make the tackle. That was a nice job of smacking that up inside, making this a third and short. Man, on this side of the field, you have to be thinking four down territory to be aggressive. They haven't been very good in the second halves of ball games. But with Utah State expecting run, a play action deep shot would be a great play call here. Boise State changed two. Utah State is allowed to change two. Third down short. A lot of men in the box. Polani hit and dropped. Going to lose a yard. Fourth down and three. Vong Pachong on patrol. And that was a nice job by Marcus Moore sliding across the line of scrimmage. This offensive line by Boise State is losing its matchup in the trenches. Cred credit the Broncos for the play calling, but because they lost a couple yards on that first play, it significantly diminishes a fourth down conversion there. You don't want to start the second half giving a bunch of momentum to the Aggies, so a punt here is the right call. Packed house, and they've been aching to just sink their teeth into this game. Utah State down 10. Nathan fair catch called for and he makes it this time at the six yard line. This is not great field position for Utah State. They get the football when we return. This is how Utah State has 317 total yards and no points. Well, the first four drives of this game just started as poorly as you could. An interception, a blocked field goal, a turnover on downs, and then an ill-advised throw into the end zone when you're another scoring position. And then you field a, a punt on the three-yard line. It should have been a safety, but it wasn't. And then you cap things off with another missed field goal. It's amazing that this score isn't at a hand, but this Utah State offense can take advantage of this defense. 90, they need to. 94 yards away, and it's Tyler, Tyler across Jr. the 20. And out to the 27. This is too easy. A five-man box for Boise State. They're worried about the pass and the big play, and they are not defending the run inside. It's another five-man box. From Utah State, run it again. And 20 yards to that total. No gain there. Jackson Cravens makes the stop for Boise State. You know, if you're just joined us, Logan Bonner, came from Arkansas State, has had a terrific start, was injured last week at Air Force, came out. Andrew Peasley was awesome in the second half. Peasley came in for a couple of drives in the first half after the Bonner interceptions. And there's not much there. This could be third down and 10. Shane Irwin stops Calvin Tyler. It's a really nice job by Shane Irwin for that defensive end position, scraping or spiking inside. He started outside the tackle on the snap of the ball, went inside the tackle, got penetration, and that's what clogged up the run lanes. He did it there, and it worked beautifully. The play before, it didn't, and we saw what happened. Utah State has actually been pretty good on third down in this ball game. High snap. Bonner collects. Flushed. Fires. Sideline. Incomplete. Scarver, Tyreek LaBeouf on the coverage. You were mentioning how good they were on third down as a whole. That's true, but he's really lucky this ball didn't go off the head. Both of these teams are having problems with the snaps. He sets his feet and tries the throw, just can't connect home. This is a team that really struggled 
on third down in the second quarter only one for five and start out here with another punt. That's another nice play by the Boise State secondary and the Broncos are a little banged up back there. It's good to see that Markel Reed has come back into the game. To get a lot it's a fake. Constantly. Oh my goodness. What a disaster. An absolute meltdown by Utah State. I don't understand this. This is such a panic play by this Utah State team. To do that at this field position, we talked about Blake Anderson being aggressive, but my goodness, this penalty, whatever it is, could loom large for what could be the biggest blunder so far of this early season. Flag is down 47 yard line. So that's well behind the line of scrimmage. And it was a run. Boise State was sitting on it. Now, it fooled nobody. We've watched it again. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Boise State, number 34, unsportsmanlike conduct. Utah State number 38. Those fouls will offset. It'll be first down, Boise State. Was that a designed play or was it just a jailbreak and improvisation? It's hard to tell. It is hard to tell. Look at Boise's eyes, they're on it. No, this is a designed play and it's a poorly designed. You don't set the edge there. Look at the white hats on it. I don't know what they saw pre-sap to even think that they had a chance there. But remember in our meetings, they said there's some things that Boise likes to do on special teams where we feel like we can get one. But that has to be one that Coach Avalos is certainly excited about. And Blake Anderson may live to regret what wasn't a very good play call whatsoever. Well, that definitely wasn't the one from the 18. Great field position. Bachmeyer, lots of time, pumps, Take looks, it. throws, caught, Shakir, down to the two. What a job by Bachmeyer and Khalil Shakir. I thought he was going to run this, but this just turns into the scramble drill. Shakir, when this play's broken down, his route stops there, but he's mirroring the quarterback, showing him his numbers to give Bachmeyer an option to throw. That savvy receiver play, and credit Bachmeyer for barring time and getting inside the one yard line. Andrew Van Buren is in, short yardage back. And a timeout for Utah State after a first half filled with mistakes. A tough start for the Aggies in the second half. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Rocket Mortgage. AT&T 5G and by State Farm. Beautiful Cache Valley, Maverick Stadium, 25,000 have packed it. Boise State on the doorstep. Interesting backfield formation here. Bachmeyer was lined up as a wide receiver, now over center, Van Buren, with the ball, big man in. Touchdown, flag is down. Flag came from the backfield, the offensive backfield. This looks like a hole. Offense, hold. number 66, 10 yard penalty, first down. That's a hold, and you go from the doorstep to just outside the 10. It's going to be the right tackle backside. He's got to get his head across the defender there. He doesn't, so he falls on his legs, and he's smartly holding there because he could have broken free and tackled the back, but a poor first step and not hitting your landmark means that almost a gimme of a touchdown now becomes much harder. And this is a Boise State team, Rich, that's only scored 20 second-half points here in 2021. They have struggled mightily in second halves of ball games, and that mistake right there could be costly. Van Buren is still in. Bachmeyer whispers in his ear. 
This is first and goal. Another wild snap. Caught. That's Smith, the tight end, spun down at the three. Second and goal. We, we what? Talked about Riley Smith, but you see Bachmeyer, that's another Aaron Snap man. I tell you what, he had to play baseball as a kid because his fielding skills are unbelievable. He's a shortstop there under center. He wasn't ready, but that's the third one of those we've seen. Something's out of sync offensively, but Bachmeyer saves him. Bachmeyer rolling, fires, caught, Shakir, touchdown Broncos. Rich, there's only about a two-foot window where this ball can be thrown. The accuracy on the frozen rope. Bachmeyer so good at frozen throws, he puts it just outside of the outstretched hands of the defender who was so close to him. But if that ball's behind a little bit, the DB can get his hand and close the gap and knock it away. What a great response to end this drive by Bachmeyer and his favorite receiver. Remember, Utah State was punting. Fourth down and long, and they faked a punt. And man, did that go sideways in a hurry. Seventeen nothing, Boise State in the third. Our Aflac trivia question: Last Boise State coach at one and three. I know it wasn't Brian Harson, wasn't Chris Peterson, wasn't Dan Hawkins, wasn't Dirk Cutter. Houston nuts. Yeah, baby. Next time you see him in the studio, don't tell them he was part of the Aflac <laughs> trivia question. Houston Dale. Scarver's going to bring this one out. And the Broncos have been really good on special teams. Queen Latifah returns in the new season of the hit drama The Equalizer. It premieres Sunday, October 10th on CBS. It's a good show, man. It's righteous justice right there. How in the world does Utah State regroup themselves mentally after a mistake-filled first half, an ill-advised, and that may be an understatement, fake punt, and now they're down. You can see this season, 41 points a game, and nothing to show for all those yards. Bailate Makakona, the junior on the carry, J.L. Skinner, Makes the stop for Boise State, gain of about three. What I do like is that the Aggies aren't abandoning the run. There's been multiple times in the second half and even the fourth quarter against an Air Force team that choose clock where they still ran it effectively. Bonner, oh, that was a dangerous throw. Tompkins unable to hold it. Tyreek Jones closed quickly. Tyreek Jones could have had another interception here if he had broke on the football. He's looking at the defender. If he had taken an inside angle there on the football, especially with the safety help over the top, he might have had another one. It's been a terrific day for the secondary for Boise State. They've really stepped it up now. They've given up some big chunk yards. They've got to find a way to take away that inside slant game. And you see right here, there's some communication out by this Mountain West logo on how they're trying to do that. Blitz comes. Bonner's throw in the flats. That's Terrell. And that's not going to be enough for a first down. Real a nice adjustment there late by Boise State by forcing the underneath throw. They were scared to get beat over the top. They were playing too far back, but tightening the coverage a little bit and forcing that throw to the flat is a great way to end this drive. Blake Anderson's team has been great in the second half. They're going to need to be here. Down 17 nothing. constantly the Aussie punter. Hold on, Rich. We might get another fake punt here. Oh, my goodness. Cotson Lee, he was right on the line of scrimmage when he kicked it. This is nuts. Shakir makes the catch. That was an incredible play by Cotson Lee. This ball should have been kicked, but he didn't. He pulled it down and was still able to get it off. So when it rains, it pours for the Aggies. Can their defense make a play?
Get ready to be scared funny with the premiere of the new series, Ghosts, a comedy that's sure to lift your spirits. Ghosts joins the powerhouse comedy lineup Thursday, October 7th, here on CBS. Boise State with the football and the lead, and a quarterback that's operating at a high level in Hank Bachmeyer. Let's check in down below with Sherry Burris. Well, Rich, we've seen some off snaps from the center, Dante Harrington. Down here on the sideline, I saw offensive line coach Tim Keene ask him emphatically why the miscommunication encouraged him to talk to Hank Bachmeyer about it. All right, thank you, Sherry. And now the Broncos, and if they can move the, the sticks and run some clock, a 17-0 lead on the road. Bachmeyer, look, it's as painful as that interception was in the second half against UCF when you see Harrington is center. Yeah, remember, Hola Malia Gonzalez is still injured and trying to battle himself back. He's been a stalwart of this offensive line. Bachmeyer fires it. And it's out of the hands of Davis Cutter. Bachmeyer is still playing at a really high level right now. He is. He's made some great decisions, but it's the, the aversion of disaster. That ball should have been caught. It was right in the hands. It wouldn't have been an easy catch, but Cutter over the shoulder should bring that one down. He has. It, it's, it's the decision-making and his ability to avert the disaster of fielding those errant snaps to me is what's been most impressive along with his ability to run the football. Henninger again, the transfer from Utah. Just a great job by Henninger, backside coming in. Nobody blocks him. He's going to watch the tackle pull away and he's going to follow him. It's called a squeeze technique, and nobody's there. He doesn't fall for the fake. Very good eye discipline there to make a very difficult third down conversion attempt. Neither team has converted a third down here in this second half. And now Boise's got a long way to go to get the first one. And the Broncos are just two of seven on third down on the day. Thomas in motion, Bachmeyer, sideline, Whoa. back shoulder, but no flag. That was an interesting call there. It looked like they were contact. There's no question that he lost his footing, but I wondered if he were helped. Billy Bowens. That's a good no call there. The wide receiver. Man, who thought that this would turn into a defensive ball game? And, and it's part good play at times by the defenses and some ineptitude offensively. Nathan backed up to his 15. This has a chance. Trying to get outside. He finally does. Has some room, cuts back there, gets to the sideline. Nathan with a nice return. And Utah State now, better field position, down three scores, 28 yards on the return. You and I are headed right back into the Cash Valley next Friday night. And this is a great showdown. Number 15, BYU and Utah State. Great rivalry under the lights on CBS Sports Network. The Mountain West resume, especially when going on the road, has been really good. Nevada on the road beats Cal. Utah State's win over Washington State. San Diego State at Arizona. San Diego State beat Utah. And of course, the big one, Fresno State taking down UCLA in the Rose Bowl. Andrew Peasley in now, and Peasley fires it out. Peasley's pass is incomplete. Peasley came in and there was a real emphasis on the run game and especially Peasley running the football when he was in in the first half. Well, what he did so well was it's his mobility to buy time. Remember, he had that 72 yard touchdown pass to Devin Tompkins and then scored on the two point play right after on a scramble on a busted play. Tyler. Utah State. The mistakes were as, as varied as you could get in that first half, right? Two interceptions, a fourth down they didn't convert, two blocked field goals. And then here, the ill-fated fake punt. Boise State has taken advantage, it feels like, on just about every mistake. 
This is a great opportunity for Utah State to try to run the football. I know it's third and six, but with a five-man box, it's begging to get run off. Paisley looks, setting up a screen left side, fires it over the head of Tyler. Scott Matlock with the pressure, had a hand up. That was a designed flare screen. That was the, the key to the play, but the problem was Boise State was on top of it, and it's another three and out for this Aggie offense. And coming into this game was one of the most explosive in the country. I think they got to get back to running the football and sticking with that. That's where they've had their biggest, most consistent plays. It's a good punt, angled, out of bounds. It's going to be, I would think, inside, yep, yeah, right at the five yard line. The Noah brothers, Ezekiel, the linebacker for Boise State, the senior. And of course, we've called his brother's name a few times, El Elyon. Noah, the sophomore. And when Utah State has the ball, they've been facing each other. Yeah, we I think we all were wanting some little brother on brother hate. <laughs> I think people that grew up with siblings can understand that. But I tell you what, it was his little brother here, Eliel, that I think did such a nice job of picking up that first down and pushing the pile a little bit. That was an important drive and play on the first couple series in this game. Now Boise State inside their five yard line and an opportunity for Blake Anderson's defense. Take a look at this. You got one on one opportunities here. The press coverage, maybe take a shot. Bachmeyer going to take that shot and it's Evans with the catch. That's breathing room and more. 15 yards. Man, Tim Plow, the offensive coordinator, has called a brilliant game. Off of play action, you would expect a run there, but with man coverage out on the outside edge with press, just let Octavius Evans do his thing. He's the second leading receiver on this team, runs a beautiful route, creates some separation, and Bachmeyer hits him. Bachmeyer hit as he throws, oh. and it's incomplete. He took a shot just as he delivered it. There was miscommunication on that between him and Octavius Evans. He wanted to take it again. There was some late pressure here. Beautiful job that time by Shaq Bond to hit him as he throws the football. It almost looked like he got that elbow hit, but it was a little bit of a zig when it should have been a zag there. Rare miscommunication between those two. Second down and 10. Polani left side and he's dropped. Flag down. Vong Pachong makes the play. Polani's tiptoeing. I don't like the way he's running. There's there's something to be said about being patient. But I want him to hit it up in there. Holding offense number 86. That penalty is declined. Third down. That's Tyler Egren. There he is right here. Third down, ten. Bachmeyer fires at the sticks. That's a first down. What a nice play. Riley Smith found the yardage, and Bachmeyer found him. They sit down on these routes so well. It's a beautifully thrown football. He throws it right as the receiver starts to turn there, Smith, and doesn't allow the zone coverage to get there. That's Holani, who takes the snap, pulls it, and another flag hits the turf. Oh, 
Illegal substitution, 12 players on defense. Five yard, five yard penalty, first down. That's the second time in the game that we've saw this, and given the location of those flags, that's what my suspicion was. But Rich, we've talked about it, how important these details are, the very things that have allowed the Aggies to be successful and be 3-0 and are costing them mightily here throughout this entire game. I don't know that I've ever seen a more creative run game than Boise State has had here today. Tim Plow, the offensive coordinator, done a masterful job. That one is thrown out of bounds, and it's incomplete. That's a successful play. If it's not there, now he could have checked it down and hit Halani, overthrew him to get rid of it. But that was a first and five play because of the penalty. Now it's second and five. Pretend like you just had a great play, and now your entire playbook's open. You can run or take a deep shot here. Whatever Plow wants to call, he can have. Polani launches himself across the 45, gets to the 47, he's right on the stick, and that's enough for a first down. It's a good job that time coming from that outside in by Cash Gilliam just to get his hand on Halani's legs. Pick those feet up and keep running, but five was there to shut it down. They still get the first though, and boys are putting a really nice drive together here, really patient. Shakir, top of your screen, single coverage. Thomas in motion. Bachmeyer under pressure again. Whoa, wow. what a catch there. Billy Bowens had a man all over him. The junior. Two things here. You have to create separation with quickness off the snap, but he fights back. The location of the football, though, and the timing by Bachmeyer were spectacular. what you see on the next level on Sundays there those windows aren't very big but Bachmeyer found it total yardage has flipped Boise State dominant here in the second half Thomas in motion another weird snap Bachmeyer fields it sets and throws Ooh. big hit Smith goes down and the pass is incomplete again the pass game is all predicated on timing the snap here where Bachmeyer's got a field that he takes his eyes away from being downfield so it takes him a little bit longer to recognize he does set his feet but the ball's a little bit behind and that's hard for Smith to be able to turn and catch however the tight end should have caught it there are the numbers 18 of 33 I don't know that we have a graphic built for successful bad snaps fielded. <laughs> Should be a new, new statistical category, but Bachmeyer's all conference at this point. Second and ten and flags. Delay a game, I think. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, second down. Here it is, Hank Bachmeyer's greatest hits. <laughs> Well, he had to be a shortstop or a second baseman or something, but this is an incredible job. You'll watch him. He's not expecting these snaps, but he reacts. And his ability not just to catch it and avoid the muff snap, but to deliver the football accurately. Look at this. It is so difficult to do what he's doing, but he makes it look effortless. Bachmeyer, quick throw, flag down. That was intended for C.T. Thomas. And it should have been pass interference because C.T. Thomas was grabbed from the back, but I think it's going to be something in the trenches. It's where the flag was directed. Personal foul, hands to the face. Defense, number 96, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Bukesi Vakauta. And, and I appreciate you letting me pronounce that one there, partner. <laughs> you were very, had, very generous with that uh, with that pronunciation. I had your back. Thank though. you. I was ready. See that right there. That happens, man, down in the trenches. But what you've got to do is learn to reset your hand, bring it down off the face mask. You don't want to do it because you feel the leverage and getting movement. But it's another costly mistake that extends a drive. Utah State 32 yard line. Boise State marching and eating clock. Bachmeyer looking, firing. Oh, I can't.
can't believe he went up and got it. He's out of bounds. But what an incredible catch by Shakir. I mean, the one he, the one-handed one he made two weeks ago was great. Look at this one. We talked about ball skills, high pointing, winning the tough 50-50 catch. This is an incredible job to go up and get that football. But that's a ball that Bachmeyer should have ever thrown. And he was clearly out of bounds. He tried to get that foot down. No, he's out. It's a heck of a catch. And he's slow to get up. This guy is a special football player, Khalil Shakir. 17 nothing, Boise State. Just another day at the office for one of the most exciting players on the West Coast. Khalil Shakir over 100 yards seven catches that one was out of bounds and that kind of reflects the mood here in Logan Utah State had 317 first half yards and no points Boise State now second down and 10 Hank Bachmeyer he's going to lose a couple Catch Gilliam in the pursuit. A couple things happened there. There was immediate pressure by Utah State, but the wide receiver, Billy Owens, falls. He's right there on the slot, right there. He loses his footing, so that throws the timing off, which allowed the Aggies to get pressure late. Three of 10 on third down is Boise State. This is third and 11. Blitz comes. Bachmeyer back foot throw. It's picked. A Johnny Carter came out of nowhere. Did he get the foot down for the pick? Looks like it. Looked like that left foot was down when the ball entered his hands. Did he control it? That's the question there, Rich. Does he have control with that left foot? When the ball hits his hands, he's got a foot down, but he must demonstrate possession of the catch for this to count. And that right foot didn't make it. So the left foot made it. The right foot went down, but the question is control while the left foot is on the turf. Gene Sterator has been with us all day. Gene, what did you see? In my opinion, guys, I believe that Carter stuck that ball and possessed it firmly with his right arm, and it really doesn't move much at all. I think it's possession with a foot down and a good reception. And your guys here agree with you as well. Thank How you, Gene. John Gentry. All right, Aaron Taylor. If Utah That's State's going to do it, they better start They're soon. Seven. They're running out of time. Blake Anderson's offense has been electric this year. Three second half comebacks. Andrew Peasley is in at quarterback. Love the decision there to run on first down. I would keep running. There's time in this game. John Gentry, and that's a first down out to the 24. Tyreek Jones in on the stop. The adjustment that Boise State has made is pressing the receivers on the outside edge. So when you stack them like they are at the top of the screen there, that makes those free releases easier. He's got them. Man open. Caught at midfield. Brandon Bowling, who came from Arkansas State. That's what that stack position does. It makes the defender stack, and it allows for a free release. Great play call there. Gentry gets outside. He's 30. Race for the pylon. Knocked out of bounds. Great job on the perimeter for the crack replace. That block right there is what springs it. Boise State has to have somebody come over the top to replace the defender on the slot that got himself picked. And number two, Gentry, is scoop. 41 yards. And the football 
Right at the seven yard line. They like these two down here to work off one another. McGriff is a big tall target to isolate or to pick to free 13 up. Correction, prior to the delay of game, timeout, Utah State. Their second charge timeout of the half. Full timeout. Now that's really interesting here. You're in a scoring position. Blake Anderson on the doorstep to get the first points of the game. Timeouts aren't cheap. That's an expensive one for Utah State. There's no question in the game you're trying to come back in with their comebacks that they've had in the fourth quarters throughout this season. Timeouts played a huge factor. So you have to take advantage of that here and make sure there's a good play call. In these situations, they like to run both the quarterback and the running back from this formation inside the 10 yard line. So let's look, see what they dial up. Is Boise expecting that? Or do they take advantage of it? Andrew Peasley, backup quarterback, is one of their best running weapons. Keep it up the middle. John Gentry with time melting away in the third quarter. Three quarters gone. Does Utah State have another comeback left in them? Boise State, Utah State. Blake Anderson face now, second and goal from the seven. Height mismatch is six inches up top. Andrew Peasley at the controls. He'll throw. He'll look. Take it. He'll keep it outside. Scampers out of bounds. This is going to be third and goal. JL Skinner in pursuit. Beautiful job of man coverage down here in the red zone by Boise State. This is a defense that's only given up eight fourth quarter points all season long. They have been, but don't break. Utah's got to make them pay. Peasley keeps in trouble, and he's hammered. JL Skinner again. Fourth and goal. Where do you go now? You go field goal. This is still a two score game. You kick the field goal here, get some positive points, and end this drive with a chance to win the ball game. Two field goal attempts. One was blocked, one was missed. This from 20. This one was low, but it got through. And finally, after all that offense, Utah State is on the board. Adam Zucker in New York with this Jeep update. Notre Dame fans are the only ones jumping around against Wisconsin right now because right after the Badgers took their first lead of the game, Chris Tyree gone all the way to give the Irish a 17-13 lead early on in the fourth quarter. Rich, is Aaron smiling? Oh, Adam, you just made the big fella's day. Here come the Irish. Here come the Irish. Look at that, 105 wins in school history. Tied for most with Mr. Canute Rockman. 17-3, Boise State on top. Boise State has done a lot of little things right. Utah State has a lot of a lot of big things they've not done right. But three points, and maybe that's the spark that the Aggies need. Because in their three wins, they've had to find a spark somehow, some way. And they've had impressive wins. Look at this. That's in Pullman, not an easy place to win. North Dakota, good team, came from behind. And the win at Air Force, you rarely come from behind against Air Force late. They were down 11 points against a team that as good as there is in the country at chewing clock. 
and were somehow able to come back and win. So they've got that confidence. They have that book. They have that stored away in their head. But they have to start to have some things go right. And that means on this drive, their defense has to either get a turnover or force a three and out or get some other spark play. Shakir flying through. That's a really good tackle on an elusive runner. Shaq Bond, the senior. Shaq Bond in the open field. That's not an easy guy to take down. Just good technique there. To see him wrap up one of the most elusive guys in the open field in Shakir. Second down, eight. Utah State's defense obviously needs some stops here in the fourth. Bachmeyer rolling, throwing, crossing pattern there. Another nice tackle. C.T. Thomas the catch, but that's going to be short of the first down. That was Cash Gilliam there in pursuit. Just an excellent job of coming across. It was late, but he kept himself open. Bachmeyer bought time and another crucial third down. Looks like Boise's going to talk about it. There is a player down. I think that was Cash Gilliam, the young man that made the tackle. Gilliam is down and we'll be right back. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Geico. The all new 2022 Grand Wagoneer. Sonic. And by The Home Depot. First game of our doubleheader, Mountain West, Utah State 3 0, trailing Boise State. And the Broncos of Boise. A third down and five. Hank Bachmeyer, blitz comes. He's got time. He's got a man. That's C.T. Thomas. Breaks the tackle. Cross midfield. 46 yard line, 24 yards. C.T. Thomas just low. Lined up in the slot, coming across and just a simple catch and run. We've seen Shaq Bond make a ton of plays, but he was a little too little, a little too late there for the big pickup. George Holani, big hole, breaks to the outside, inside the 30, and a flag is down, and that feels like either a face mask or a horse collar. The Johnny Carter on the tackle. Boise going to get more yardage, it feels like. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 12. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. We talk about details being the difference. You just simply can't do that. That's penalty number 11 for this Utah State Aggie team. And it's not just the penalties, Rich. It's when and how and where they're taking place. The total of all of that is 32 yards, and it's inside the 14. Shakir with Bachmeyer lined up as a wide receiver. And Shakir looking for a hole. He's swallowed up right at the 14. Stay tuned for the State Farm College Football Today, time permitting. Adam Brick, BJ. All the highlights get you ready for the second game of our double dip. Arkansas, Texas A&M in Dallas. Number seven against number 16. They've been Nashville down here in Boise, very smartly letting the clock roll down. Down he goes. Nick Henninger has had a outstanding day. It's going to be a great job here just with a simple game with an ET from the outside. When you get penetration and get to the hip of the adjacent lineman, it makes it impossible for the guard to come back over. And Henniger with a crucial sack there in the red zone. Points are at a premium in this ball game. That last play was huge for this defense. Bachmeyer. This is Thomas to the outside, and he's cut down. 
at the 15 yard line. Justin Rice in the pursuit. Eight yards on the carry. Field goal time for Boise State. I felt coming on this drive that it was important for Boise to be aggressive, to take shots at the end zone, to get a touchdown here. They're not. This is the right decision after the sack to kick this field goal, and that's a heck of a stop and a win for the guys in blue. It's not seven, but an important three points. Utah State's defense forces the field goal. Still a long way to go. Back to a three score game, 20 to three. Boise State on top of Utah State, 10 and a half left in Logan, Utah. Joel Velasquez will kick it off. And it's a little chip shot. It stays in bounds. Scarver has to pick it up. Runs into his old man. And then is spun out of bounds. Excellent. But beautifully executed. Coming up next, SEC on CBS. Top 20 matchup. Two undefeated teams in the SEC West. Seventh ranked Texas A&M. Number 16, Arkansas. Game two of our college football doubleheader coming up right here on CBS. The defense of Texas A&M is one of the best in the country. Not the best in the country. Look at the numbers. They're outstanding on the line to scrimmage Rich. And I picked this game on Inside College Football, our flagship Tuesday night show. I picked Texas A&M to win it because of their defensive line. Andrew Peasley will tuck it and go. Time is working against Utah State. And as well, two timeouts that they've already burned don't help. The two biggest things that are looming large here for the Aggies. The first down are the fake punt and the timeout that they burned in the red zone, leaving them only one left. They've got plenty of time to score the 17 points that they need to tie this up, but they can't dilly dally. They've got to be efficient here. They've yet to convert a third down in the second half. Can the Aggies finish? Beasley waiting, flush, lost the football. It's loose, and it's scooped up, and Boise State has it. And this week, there's no whistles. Matlock forced it. Washington recovered it. Matlock is such a playmaker. This is what they needed, just off simple stunts. You cannot put your running back onto a defensive lineman as he's coming around. That's exactly what happened there with Tyler and the Broncos defense that needed to make a play. And what an excellent job that time by Cravens of knocking that football out. Watch this, the wherewithal to swipe at it and get that ball out. That is a game-changing and possibly win-preserving play and set of downs there for the guys in white. And the whistle's reference was last week, Oklahoma State. A scoop and a score that should have been a touchdown. The officials blew it dead. Boise got the ball but lost the points, and Holani breaks out. Touchdown, Broncos. Flag is down, back at the 11. It's going to be a hold on Khalil Shakir. Now it's Boise's turn to make mistakes. Holding offense, number two. Ten yard penalty enforced from the spot of the foul. First down. You know how I knew that, Rich? Watch him when you stick your hands up and say, I wasn't holding. That's a dead giveaway. Here he is at the right of your screen right there. He's good right now, but right there with the turn at the exact moment that the back's there, that's going to get called every single time. If I saw it from up here, you know they saw it from down there. Nine and a half minutes left. Three 
three Utah State turnovers. Blitz comes. Bachmeyer hit. Ball's deflected. Coming hard was a Johnny Carter. This is just an un unblocked defender from the field side. Bachmeyer never even sees him come. Comes off this outside edge. Bachmeyer's really lucky he got that football out so quickly, and they got a hand on it. If you're Utah State, you have to continue to do this. You have to be aggressive and try to make something positive happen. Polani. George Polani. Feet still moving to the 15 yard line. It makes it third down and 10 yards to go. Gain of five. It's a player down for Boise State. Third down and 10. Bronco down. This has been a problem for them as health on the offensive line. It's been part of the reason the run game just hasn't been there. George Helani's been banged up, and that's Jake Stetz, the right guard. Started all seven games for them last year at right guard. Was a second team all met Mountain West Conference player and he's slow to get up. You see with his right hand he's grabbing that left shoulder. That would be a huge loss. Remember Garrett Curran the left guard has been battling back some injuries finally being able to play today. Hola Malia Gonzalez. So he just leads in there with that. Shoulder, and if you wonder, that's what took place. So, big and strong as these guys are, the rotator cuff, there's these four little muscles inside there that keep the joint in place. You'll see a lot of offensive linemen that wear sleeves. I was one of them because our shoulders take a beating when we're down there in the trenches. See they're testing the strength right now. External rotation, internal rotation, flexion, extension. Seeing how strong he is. We'll see him back here. If they somehow pick up this first down. Third down, 10. Aggie show blitz. There's movement and lots of flags and a catch by Cutter, but he's banged out of bounds. Great job there with the hard count. By Brockmeyer to get the offsides. Justin Rice with the hit. It's penalty 12. We're seeing Jake Stetz coming back into the ball game right there. Offside. Defense number 12 in the neutral zone with the snap five yard penalty third down. It's a great play rich and the reason that you take that if he had picked up the first down they would have declined it obviously and kept going but because he came up short this gives them another attempt to pick up the first down. They don't need a touchdown here. They need a little bit more than five yards and they get a fresh set of downs. So the play call here is really important and be alert for a four down situation if you're Boise State and you're really close on fourth down. That penalty also chews up more time off the clock. Tick, tick, tick. Third down five. Bachmeyer fires. Caught. Whoa, Halani. And he's got the first down. Bachmeyer again. Put that football right where it had to be. And it had to be thrown quickly. It's not just where to throw, it's when to throw. If he waited any longer to do that, it would have been an incompletion. Holani, he stumps. Now you don't want to lose yardage there like Boise State did, but they do have time on their side. We are now under eight minutes. Utah State only has one timeout. If they can find a way to punch this in, plays like that don't hurt you. In fact, they end up helping you. And they're taking their sweet time getting themselves lined up very smartly. Late substitution, you can do that when the offense substitutes. 
And Bachmeyer's pointing to the play clock. Didn't get it off. Nope. Avalos took a timeout. Not the worst of sequences, though, because it's down to 7 22. And the Broncos are up 20 to 3. Dear College Sports. Don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Fans all here, huge crowd for Utah State. Just a glorious day in Logan, Utah. But Boise State is in control. Polani to the five. Like the play call there because of what it's going to do to the time on the clock. But there are huge implications here of the difference between a touchdown or a field goal. The difference in those four points, if they can get a touchdown here to make it 27 to three, it's going to be awfully hard for Utah State to score three touchdowns and get three two-point conversions to tie it. In less than seven minutes. With one timeout. Bachmeyer, corner, Shakir, no. Oh. Flag is down. Shakir in the corner, Cam Lampkin on the coverage, and the flag came from that corner. Pass interference, defense, number six. That foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two yard line, first down. Not just penalties, where those penalties are, because what this does is it extends the series of downs. Boise State could easily chew another minute and a half to two minutes off of this clock with it being first down in their field position. You, of course, want to punch it in, but you have to be savvy with your clock management here. And we're seeing a new quarterback, the freshman, Taylor Green. They love him down here because of his athleticism. Green with the snap. It's going to be at 5.55 before they snap this next play. I know Green wanted to score, but honestly, from a strategic standpoint, Rich, this works in Boise State's favor. Green out, Bachmeyer back in. They love this guy. 4-4 in the 40. 40 inch vertical. You rarely hear that from a quarterback. They talked about liking his athleticism. They've got some packages in from him out of Louisville, Texas, with a very bright future. Van Buren. And again, not a disaster for Boise State. The clock just continues to melt. Three yards. Be a little over five minutes before they snap this ball next. It's a very good chance, one way or the other, that the Aggies are going to get this ball back with under five minutes. And the reason that's significant, especially if Boise State can find a way to get a touchdown here. If they only get a field goal, then it gets really interesting for Utah State. Van Buren in the backfield. Bachmeyer looking. Oh, man, wide open. Touchdown. That's Matlock. <laughs> Scott Matlock, a defensive lineman. His dream has come true. There's nothing better than fat guy touchdowns. He's right here. He's made so many plays, blocked a field goal. Utah State's not even accounting for him. They're expecting run. Matlock makes him pay. What an incredible play call. Has there been anybody that's had as good of a day as Tim Plow, the offensive coordinator? Extra point is good. The Broncos. There's a little trickeration right there. Little bobble, and he holds it. Boise State 27, Utah State 3, 5.09 left. Scoring summary, okay, yardage, not impressive. Plays, look at the time. That's huge. 
right now. And <laughs> it's incredible. It, it's hard, Rich, to find a way to get 10th place and only go 15 yards. But you are spot on, partner. Those four plus minutes that they chewed off loom almost too large here for the guys in blue. Scarver looking for a seed. And he's out to the 30 yard line. Time now for the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike's Subs. Well, it was the sack and the strip and the turnover for this Boise State defense late. The offense takes it over, chews up four minutes off the clock after this. We see that that defensive line, whether it's blocking kicks, whether it's strip sacks, or making things happen, they're all deserving of big sandwiches after this one. How about the second half that Spencer Danielson's defense has had? After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 29 of the receiving team, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. It's been masterful, and that's penalty number 14 there for the Aggies. But talking about Spencer Danielson, they gave up 317. That's number 29's first unsportsmanlike conduct. 317 yards in the first half, only 109 in the second half. No third down conversion, only three points allowed in the last six quarters and 11 points in the second half all season. Andy Avalos has to be happy with the way that his defense responded. Bottom left. Right there. Took a swipe at him. And that's the frustration level. And that's what Blake Anderson's going to have to coach against to make sure that they don't lose all that momentum that they had in the first three weeks. They earned this loss, but these are mistakes that are correctable, and they've got a pretty ripe, pretty physical BYU team coming in here next week. Logan Bonner's back in there. Bowling with the catch, and that's a first down. Both of these teams have BYU coming up, and BYU's number 15. So as glum as everyone has looked here in his fourth quarter in the stands for Utah State, they'll perk up when BYU walks in here next Friday. That's incomplete. And for Boise State, look, Bronco fans at 2-2 two and two are frustrated. They're going to win this football game, but they're frustrated with the loss at UCF, a really good team, and the one-point loss to Oklahoma State. But they've got a number 15 team on the horizon as well in Boise State in two weeks. And all those things will bode very well to turn this season around. I mean, we, let's be honest, Boise State fans, the sky's falling when you start one and two. It's not the way that Andy Avalos would have written it up, especially when on the other sideline for Blake Anderson, it couldn't have gone any better. But to beat this team on the road like they've got a strong chance to do here and the way that they've done it is just what the doctor ordered for a team that is still letting everybody know we're a player in the Mountain Division and the championships go through us. Big hit over the middle. J.L. Skinner, Devin Tompkins was the receiver. That's a great point because the Broncos have always valued the conference. They've won 19 straight conference games, not including that conference championship lost last year to San Jose State. So this will be 20 in a row. And of course, four Mountain West championships since they joined the conference. And you talked about those early losses to Oklahoma State and the UCF. They were by a combined six points. That's what's so frustrating. They're literally, this team is four plays away from being a top 15 team. Shakir. I mean, stop and think about that for a second, Rich. Four plays go differently. Andy Avalos is a top 15 team. But they've got some good clubs coming down the pike in Nevada with their explosive offense, with Carson Strong, BYU with a great season, picking up right where they left off a year ago. Boise State is never an easy out. But Fresno State and San Diego State, two of the teams that have let the Pac-12 know that they're not messing around. The conference championship may go through those two. Yeah, the schedule rotates, and so the three out of their division are really good. Fresno State's terrific this year. We know that. San Diego State as well. And Nevada 
may well have an, an NFL quarterback and an NFL wide receiver. I mean, Fresno State spanked UCLA last week. I hope you're listening, Rick. <laughs> Shots fired <laughs> from the Cache Valley. <laughs> But you're right, Rich. My goodness, this schedule for these guys. 11 of the 12 opponents are currently have winning records. Five of the 12, are you kidding me? Almost 50% of them are undefeated. And look at the combined record. This is the fourth hardest schedule in an all of college football. If Bachmeyer and this offense can figure the run game down and the defense can begin games the way that they can end them, this could be a hell of a season for their coach who's one of the best players that's ever played here. Tyler Crow in the backfield. The walk on who now has a scholarship. Bachmeyer pulls it again. That's been a real important component to the run game for Boise State. He's the leading rusher and I'm telling you offensive coordinator Tim Plow he deserves the game ball. He deserves to be the player of the game because of how good he's called this game and him coming down onto the field at the request of the players in the meeting that they had earlier this week is a big reason why they're up as we unfortunately take a look at a downed Aggie. 302 left. Andre Grayson is the Utah State player. Plow came down to the field. He was the offensive coordinator at UC Davis, his alma mater. He was a quarterback there. He had always been down on the field, but when he arrived at Boise State, they sent him up top. He didn't want to say anything. And when the players said, let's get him down on the field, we want him there. It was uh, where he's been his entire coaching career before his stop here. So it was different. And he felt that that was maybe part of the reason why it wasn't working. But what I loved he said was how big of a moment that was for him. Sherry Burris, you've got more. Yeah, guys, I've been watching Tim Plow down here on the sideline. He said it meant so much to him that the players wanted him down here. And I'm seeing that. I saw him with Shakir. They've been in our, hand in hand uh, talking to each other. So the chemistry that he said we were seeing, we are indeed seeing him with the players down here. Thank you, Sherry. He's had a, a as We've talked about they wanted to get creative in the run game and boy did they. It's also a testament to the culture of Boise State and how important that is to win. They're going to milk as much time as they can and as well they should. Yo, jump. That is Tyler Crow. Crow was a linebacker coming in, a walk on linebacker. They switched him to running back. He's a, a special teams demon, and it was a big moment for him and for the whole team when they gave him a scholarship. Ooh, he gives him a little look back, too. Now he's lucky because he kind of slipped, but one of the many examples that football is a game of leverage. Well, this football game was a game of mistakes for Utah State, certainly in the first half and in the second half. And Boise State has taken care of their business. Pro again. Ball carrier. Same again. play. We talked about the culture of Boise State, but Utah State's got a good culture as well, and they're going to need it because next Friday, a very talented BYU team is coming in. Then they go on the road to Las Vegas at that brand new Allegiant Stadium. UNLV gave Fresno State all it could handle last night, and you look down the stretch on the road at New Mexico State, they can catch their breath there. It's not going to be an easy road game against San Jose State. Wyoming's a physical team. There's still a lot of wins on that schedule for this Utah State team. So they have to make sure that they can't let this loss today equal more down the line. A win over BYU, regardless of if they're 15 in the country, would take a lot of sting away from this game for Utah State. That is a heated rivalry. No, there's no question about that. And this is a loss that Blake Anderson's team earned. He told us that Boise State's the most talented team we've seen all season, without question. They knew they were going to have to play clean, and they didn't. 
and that's a big reason why they lost. But the good news, if you're an Aggies fan, everything we've seen today, Rich, is correctable. Boise State, the final seconds ticking away. Hank Bachmeyer was outstanding. Khalil Shakir, terrific. And Andy Avalos said the Broncos even their record at two and two with a decisive 27 to three win on the road in front of a packed house in Logan, Utah. Nice game, partner. We'll see you next weekend right back here in Logan. For Aaron Taylor, Sherry Burris, our entire CBS crew. I'm Rich Walt saying so long from Logan, Boise State, 27 to three. We'll get you back to Adam Zucker and company in the studios right after these messages. Goodbye from Logan.